Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics. And yes, there's been a lot of misinformation which causes the current Brexit mess that we now find ourselves in. Ignorance may be bliss for those who possess it, but it's, well, more than a little annoying for those of the rest of us. But in this video, I'd like to discuss how the Brexiteers have really doubled down on the ignorance of international negotiations, heaping further embarrassment on the UK. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So it started, I suppose, last week with a tweet of an English breakfast. At least I think it was supposed to be an English breakfast. It wasn't a very good one. It was certainly not a full English breakfast. There was no sausage, no black pudding, no hash brown, no mushrooms. It was really poor, in fact. The author of the tweet was proudly claiming that this is what Leave supporters voted for. A cooked breakfast that we can have as members of the EU because we have been having. I say we, I at least put sausage and black pudding and mushrooms and hash brown on them. But still, that wasn't even the dumbest aspect of this tweet. Someone else had to point out that much of the food on the plate was imported. So ironically, voting for Brexit made such a repast much less likely come 2021 when it arrives in all its misplaced glory and we struggle to get those food imports into the country. But that wasn't even the dumbest thing that Brexit did in the last few days to reduce the IQ of the country still further. We were treated to an even more embarrassing display of ignorance. Now, Brexiteers have been lauding Boris Johnson's brilliance in achieving a number of major victories. First of all, and this took place a little while ago, it was touted that Johnson has outmaneuvered the EU by insisting that meetings take place in the UK as well as the EU. Yes, don't worry, no need to scratch your head. We know this is standard practice too. The problem is that many Brexit supporters, by no means all, I hasten to add, but many have paid no attention to international relationships before Brexit and even since have paid no attention to international relationships outside of Brexit. They saw that all the meetings for the withdrawal agreements that took place over the years took place in Brussels or Strasbourg. I mean, that was that was for the withdrawal agreement. Uh, they just assumed that these sorts of things take place at the strongest member seat of power, acknowledging that the EU is stronger, I suppose. But of course, at the time, we were a member of the EU. So it wasn't a case of talks taking place in the EU instead of the UK. The UK was the EU. Um, they we, we weren't holding those talks in someone else's territory. It was ours too. Uh, now that we've surrendered membership, we are a third country. We are no longer a member of the EU. We're still in it for a while while the transition period holds, but we are a third country. And so talks will be split as they always are. The same occurred for talks between the EU and every other nation that it has negotiated deals with, as well as other nations that have negotiated with each other as well. So some of the talks will be in the EU, which now is not the UK, and some will be in the UK, the third country. That is just how it works. But in the last few days, there's been a later and even more baffling claim of victory. And it is this, that the talks and the documentation produced as a result of the talks will use English. I mean, how is that a victory? If anything, it's an embarrassing defeat a frank admission that we're potentially the least fluent nation in Europe. We can barely speak our own language and would have no chance in any other. If it weren't for the likes of, of bits of Ireland and, uh, and Wales, we, I think we would be the least fluent nation in Europe. And that meetings will be taking place in English is because the EU's negotiating team can speak English fluently. Ours cannot speak any other European language, as far as I know. Why are Brexiteers cheering that our ignorance is a victory? A rather amusing statement was made about this. This was from The Sun, which was one of our more reprehensible newspapers. Unless you're in Liverpool, in which case it is definitely considered the most reprehensible newspaper. And it was this. They said, as persuading the EU to conduct them in English... The head of the PM's team, David Frost, has ensured that if officials want to speak French, they must pay the interpreter's bills. 
Hooray, cried the Brexit supporters, failing to understand that this represents a tactical weakness in the talks. For a start, if the negotiating team wish to speak French, they don't have to pay for interpreters. If they wish to be understood and speak in French, OK, but they don't. Consider the scenario. The discussions are underway across the table and the EU team wish to say a few confidential words. They can just casually say them in French. We'll be none the wiser because we didn't bring interpreters along. The EU won't be paying for interpreters because they don't need them. Our own team will just have to sit there with a dumb look on their face. But if they wish to have a confidential word with each other, they're either going to have to get their phones out and get busy on, busy on WhatsApp or they're going to have to leave the room. Either way, it's a disruption to proceedings. How is that a victory? To allow the EU to not only have private conversations with one another at the negotiating table with our own team just a metre away, or should that be one and a third yards, whilst we don't have the power to do likewise. That is an advantage we have given the opposing side. It's not a victory we've gained for ourselves. We've given it away. But that's the nature of Brexit now, celebrating the most mundane things as victories and sometimes actual defeats as victories. In the same way that Brexit supporters cheer every time a company says that it's not closing down production in the UK. As if keeping jobs we already have is a victory to compensate for the tens of thousands we're losing. This time, they're celebrating the fact that when the EU talk to us, they'll do so in a way that we'll understand. I mean, that is sort of the purpose of talking, to be understood. It's a pretty low bar for victory, don't you think? But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.